invite you to take God's Word and open to Hebrews chapter number 11. The book of Hebrews chapter number 11, I also want to encourage you to uh, hold a finger there or at least put a finger in Genesis chapter 22. We're going to look at both of those passages this morning. You know, and I started thinking about it, and there's been a lot of Mother's Days that uh, I have preached a Mother's Day sermon. And all week in preparation, I thought, you know, I I'm not necessarily going to preach a Mother's Day sermon. And as I sat here thinking this morning, I thought, you know, I'm preaching on a test of faith. And <laughs> many of you, your children, were your test of faith. And so maybe I am speaking to mothers this morning, amen? Listen, I, I read this week about a college student who was studying uh, uh, ornithology, that is the study of birds. And his professor was notorious for being the toughest professor on all of campus. When this man came in, to, uh, to the student came in to take a test, the professor gave him 25 pictures of birds' feet and told him to identify which birds they came from. Well, the baffled student looked at him and he said, uh, he said, I I'm not going to be able to do this. He said, nobody can pass this test. The instructor looked at him and said, well, then I'll just fail you. The student said, go ahead and fail me. Well, the professor was a little bit angry at this point and he replied, he said, okay, what's your name? The student took off his shoes and his socks and said, you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Now here's the reality. None of us really like hard tests, amen? Well, when it comes to tests, most of us don't like tests at all, but we especially don't like the hard tests. But I want to tell you this morning that when it comes to a test of your faith, it can be a wonderful thing. In order that we may reverence the Word of God and the God of the Word, would you stand with me this morning? Hebrews chapter number 11 I want to read just a few short verses beginning in verse number 17. God's Word says, By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac uh, shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him, in a figure. Would you pray with me? God, we love you and we just again bow humbly before your throne thanking you for your word. God, we are just uh, honored and, and just elated that you have left for us your word which shows us your will. God, we just, uh, we know that today when it comes to this idea of a test of faith, Lord, most of us know the struggle and Father, we're so thankful that your word is not silent on this subject, but that your word teaches us and instructs us not only how to endure, but how to pass this test of faith. Lord God, I just pray that this message that is preached today would bring you honor and bring you glory in these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. You know, you've probably heard it said that a faith that hasn't been tested cannot be trusted. Yeah, and, and as I was preparing this message, uh, I thought maybe I needed to take just a moment this morning to, to establish this truth with you because many people don't want to believe it. But I'm going to tell you a truth this morning and that is this. God will test your faith. Now, I want to make sure that I'm very clear because automatically when you say that, people say, no, that's not a God of love and that's not a God of mercy and God wouldn't do that. And oftentimes we confuse God testing our faith with the idea of tempting us. Understand this, at no point in time will God ever tempt you to sin. Uh, the book of James tells us in James chapter 1, it says, let no man say when he is tempted that I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. Understand, God is never going to tempt you and try to entice you or trick you into sinning. But God will test your faith. 
Now you may be like me, and I'm going to get to here in a moment, I'm going to get to, to, to showing you what God's Word says as to how we pass this test of faith. But you may be wondering, why does God do that? Why would God test our faith? And I want to tell you, number one, God will test your faith to show you your faith. Now, now, I want you to pay attention. I didn't say that God will test your faith to show him your faith. He already knows where your faith is. But God will test your faith to show you where your faith is. Think about it. How many times have you often said, uh, uh, how many times have you thought that, that your faith was perfectly fine? But as soon as it got put to the test, you failed miserably. Oh, I think about old Peter that night when Jesus said, All of you will betray me. And Peter said, Over my dead body. That's not King James, but you know what he said. He said, Lord, everybody betray you this night. I will not. And of course, we know that Peter denied the Lord that very night. So why would God test your faith? He wants to show you where your faith is. But I want you to also understand God will test your faith not only to show you. God will test your faith to grow you. James chapter 1 verse 3 says, Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Uh, the idea that James is trying to convey is that when we overcome trials, our faith is strengthened. And so what God does is God will test. God will, uh, uh, will send you these tests of faith in order that your faith may grow. Now, according to the book of Hebrews, in the text that we just read, Abraham, when he endured his test of faith, Abraham passed his test. Oh, I wonder if the same could be said for us when we have a test of faith. You know, I think that it would be wise. Oh, I would love to tell you I've passed every test of faith. Uh, I can tell you I think I've failed more than I have passed. But it, it let me, in, in, in uh, studying for this message today, I said I want to go back and, and see what did Abraham do. Gen uh, uh, Hebrews 11 tells us that Abraham passed his test. Well, what is it that he did I can emulate so that I can also pass my test of faith. Not if I have a test of faith, but when I have a test of faith. And so I want you to go back with me if you would. Hold your finger here and... In uh, Hebrews chapter 11, or take this little ribbon thing that comes in most of your Bibles. That's what it's for. Put it in Hebrews 11 and turn back to Genesis chapter 22. I want to uh, observe uh, Abraham. The writer of Hebrews says that by faith, Abraham, when he was tried, that word tried, oh, by the way, is the word tested. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, he offered up Isaac. What is it that Abraham did that helped him pass his test of faith? Now listen. I want you to stick with me. Don't just immediately dismiss me. Let me explain myself. But I'm going to tell you, number one, how do we pass a test of faith? Don't demand an immediate explanation. When you are entering into a test of faith, when you come into that season where your faith is being tried and where your faith is being stretched and where the goal is to strengthen your faith, don't demand an immediate explanation. I want you to think about Abraham. Uh, we've talked about Abraham. In fact, some of you might remember that in Hebrews, we're just continuing on from the passages that we began last week. Uh, and you might remember that, that uh, Abraham uh, uh, had a life going on. You remember Abraham was promised a son. He waited 25 years to have that son. And many uh, uh, Bible commentators estimate that Genesis chapter 22, verse number 1, is about 25 years after the birth of Isaac. Uh, notice in Genesis 22, if you're there, notice in verse 1, it says, And it came to pass after these things. Now that may not seem like a whole lot. But let me tell you what it means when God's Word says, And it came to pass after these things. It said that Abraham uh, had had a routine going. Abraham had been living life for roughly 25 years. Uh, and this test of faith, listen, came very abruptly. Uh, this test of faith kind of just came up out of nowhere. It, it's possible that for a quarter or to a half of a century that Abraham had just been plodding along, living his life, and out of the middle of nowhere, the Bible says God did tempt, verse number one, Abraham. That word tempt is the same as our modern day word test. God did test Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here am I. 
Now, uh, why are you accentuating that point, Pastor? Think about Abraham just living his life. I got a feeling that Abraham woke up and he sacrificed every time that God had instructed him to sacrifice. That Abraham woke up and he ate his Wheaties. Abraham went out and tended the garden. And I don't know if he ate Wheaties, but some of you did. But Abraham just continued on with normal life. And then boom, out of nowhere, here comes this test of faith. Listen, when I tell you, when you think about the life of Abraham, not only was his test an abrupt test, but his test was an absurd test. Listen to this. Everything's going along great. God says, Abraham, he says, yeah. Verse number two, and he said, take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I tell thee of. Out of the middle of comes this bombshell. Abraham was called to sacrifice his only son. Some of you say, well, I thought he had another son, Hagar. Uh, with Hagar, he did. Ishmael's gone. This is the son of promise that we're referencing here. This was the son that he had loved. This was the son that he had waited so long for. This was his miracle son. You remember? He was, uh, according to the Bible, said he was good as dead. Uh, and then God uh, gave them a baby. Oh, I like what God said. Notice that God didn't just say, Hey, Abraham, go here and offer your son. He said, Go to that mountain and I'll tell you which one when you get there. This was a very uh, absurd. It seemed like a while than a crazy test. Oh, you know what I'm talking about. You ever been there? I mean, you just plodding along in life. You're reading your Bible when you should and you're attending services when you should and you're loving your brethren and you're being nice to people and you're doing all of the right things and then out of nowhere you get an unexpected bill. Or out of nowhere the babysitter bails. You, you, you know what I'm talking about. It's when you, when you get that unexpected phone call from the principal. You remember I told you that sometimes your children are your test of faith. Amen? But you get that, that, uh, that unexpected phone call from a principal. Or you get a puking child on the day of your big meeting. Uh, some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. You're just plodding along with life. And then all of a sudden the bombshell of a canceled flight. Or the bombshell of a cancer scare. These things come into our lives that we stop and we say, Wait a minute, God, why? Why is this happening to me, God? I don't understand. I was doing all of these things right. Well, let's just be honest. If there was ever a character in the Bible that deserved an explanation for why God was leading him to this and through this, it probably would have been Abraham. But you know what you never read? You never read of Abraham putting his feet in the ground and saying, God, I'm not going any further until you tell me why. You don't read that. But I wonder how many times you and me have said, God, I'm done. I don't know why you're putting me through all this, God, but I am not going any further until you explain to me. Can I just tell you a truth this morning? And I don't mean to be so blunt. That's actually not true. I really do. God owes no man any explanation. Oh, uh... Wasn't that old Job, I think it was, that tried to ask God why? Oh, Job was pretty solid for a little while, and Job began to ask God why. You know what God's response was? I believe it's three or four full chapters of God saying, All right, Job, you want to know why? Where were you when I created the stars? Where were you when I created the mountains? Where were you? You know what Job said at the end? <laughs> My bad, God. Job realized that God doesn't owe anyone an explanation. So I ask you this question, how did Abraham pass his test of faith? Follow me here. Number one, Abraham wasn't crippled by a lack of explanation. Think back to some of these tests of faith that you have endured in the past. Some of those moments when you say, God, why are you leading me through this? You know, for the most part, it always makes sense on the other side. For the most part, we can always look back and see where God was growing us. But I wonder how many times in the middle have we said, you know what, God, I quit. 
If I can't see why this is happening or where this is going, if you don't explain to me, God, that I'm not in it anymore. And I want to tell you that not if you're in a test of faith, but when you are in a test of faith, do not demand an immediate explanation. I found one author that said, faith does not demand explanations. Faith rests on promises. And I want to tell you this morning that faith looks beyond the perplexities and the difficulties of our present situation and simply trusts God. How do you pass a test of faith? Don't demand an immediate explanation. Number two, how do you pass a test of faith? Draw from your previous experiences. I want you to notice Genesis 22, verse number 3. And I'm going to tell you, this is one of, the, one of the most amazing verses, I think, in all of this passage. God came and, uh, and gave Abraham this very abrupt test, this very absurd test. Go, it's your son. Verse 23, and Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave to the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went to the place of which God had told him. Can, can I just throw this little parenthetical statement in here? Uh, I'll call this a freebie if you don't mind. Uh, the fact that Abraham responded to this at all is amazing, amen? God said, go do this, Abraham did. But can I just throw this little note in there? When I began to ask myself, how was Abraham so confident that this was the voice of God and not the voice of the tempter? I mean, listen, if someone came to me today and said, sacrifice your son, well, it would probably depend on the day. But for the most part, <laughs> for the most part, I, I would say, this is nuts. But I want you to think about this. Abraham went. You know how Abraham went? He was so familiar with the voice of God, he knew when it was God that was calling. Did you know that that same God wants to make himself that knowable to you? God wants you to know him so closely that when he calls, even if it seems absurd, we are confident that it is him. I'm going to preach about that one of these days, but today let me just show, uh, show you what I'm talking about. When I talk about uh, drawing from your previous experiences. Abraham responded... And he responded immediately. He did not sit around and bemoan uh, the place or the position that he was in. The Bible says that he rose up early in the morning and he went where God had told him to go. You know, as I was doing a lot of reading, preparing for this message this week, uh, uh, one writer asked a question. He said, what do you think Abraham told Sarah that morning? <laughs> I mean, we, we see the, 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 there's a, a, a discourse that takes place between Abraham and Isaac. Uh, and Isaac was old enough to know. He said, Dad, we got all the stuff we need to go worship God, to, to do this uh, sacrifice the way God prescribed, but we don't have a lamb. We know that that, that that conversation took place. But what do you think Abraham told Sarah that morning? Sarah, I'm taking the boy. God told me to sacrifice him. I don't know what he said, but if I had to wager a guess, I got a feeling it'd be something very similar to what he told his servants in verse number 5. You see, in Genesis 22, the Bible says that they went, and when they got there, it says in verse number 5, Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I with the lad, or excuse me, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. I don't know this to be true, but Sarah said, Abraham, what are you doing today? I think he would have told her, me and Isaac are going to go up to this mountain, and we're going to worship God. Abraham followed immediately, and Abraham responded wholeheartedly. I'm not going to read all of, uh, of the account. I'm not going to read all of the details, but the Bible tells us in Genesis 22 that Abraham went to this mountain, that he built an altar, that he bound his son, laid him upon this altar. And I believe that Abraham had every intention of sacrificing his own son. How did Abraham do this? How did Abraham pass this test? When God told him, I I'm going to put you through the test and, and, and I'm giving you this absurd thing to think about. How did Abraham do it? Well, do you remember what we read in Hebrews chapter 11? We read this statement and we kind of breezed over it. But in Hebrews 11, talking about Abraham, it says, And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. 
Listen, when you, when you read that in the book of Hebrews, listen to what the writer of Hebrews is telling you. Abraham passed his test of faith. How did he do it? Because he had already received the promises of God. Think about this. God had told him, we talked about this last week. God said, Abraham, leave Ur and let's go to Canaan. Uh, he didn't even know where he was going. God just said, we're going to go to a place. I'll show you when we get there. And guess what? Abraham did. God protected. God provided. God took care of him. God promised him, I'm going to give you a son. He had to wait, but God came through. And I want you to think about this. When God called Abraham to do the absurd at this point, I cannot help but think that Abraham would have looked back and said, you know what? God called me to leave Ur, and that turned out okay. God told me I'd have a son, and even though I doubt it, that turned out okay. And I got a feeling that Abraham looked back at all of the times that God had proven himself, and Abraham allowed his faith to be strengthened from then in order to pass the test now. Listen to what I'm telling you when I say this. The previous experiences strengthened his faith for the present circumstances. Let me tell you how faith works. Every time we endure a test of faith, our faith grows stronger and stronger to help us in the next test. Do you remember what we read in Hebrews chapter 11? Now this verse will blow your mind. Hebrews chapter 11, you remember verse number 19? Verse number 19 says, uh, and this is talking about Abraham. Uh, uh, he says, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead from whence also he received him in a figure. The Bible says that Abraham passed this test. He believed that if, if he sacrificed his son Isaac, that God could raise him from the dead. Why is that so astounding? Because chronologically, by the time you get to Genesis 22, there's never been a record of someone being raised from the dead. Listen to what happened. God tested Abraham's faith and he grew his faith and he strengthened his faith. And Abraham looked back on those past experiences and said, you know what? I've never been in a test this big, but I'm going to believe this big. I'm going to trust this big because God has not let me down yet. Abraham believed what was uh, something that had never been done before. You see, what happened is Abraham's past experiences with God enabled him to exercise his faith to the fullest. So you preacher, how does that help me? Uh, you don't understand the, the test of faith that I'm in right now. You don't understand the trials that I'm enduring right now. And I want to be strong, but how do I do it? I want to encourage you, draw from your past experiences. Think about that time when, when you couldn't figure out how you were going to make ends meet. And God provided Think about the time when you didn't know how you were going to survive those circumstances and God protected. Think about the time when you didn't know how you could keep on going and it was God that pulled you through. You see, I'm convinced, brethren, that, that, that when we think back to what God has done, it'll strengthen our faith to pass the test now. So I want to encourage you, whatever uh, test of faith you're in, Draw from your past experiences and respond immediately and wholeheartedly like Abraham did. I want to show you a third thing. How do we pass a test of faith? Don't demand an immediate explanation. Just simply trust God and follow Him. Draw from your previous experiences. Allow them to strengthen faith. But thirdly, depend on God and let Him be exalted. In Genesis chapter 22, most of you know this story, but Abraham has his son bound. He's got him upon the altar, and he's got his hand drawn back, getting ready to sacrifice his son. Verse number 10, Genesis 22, verse number 10. Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And then when we tell you what happens after that, God showed up. Amen? It's okay to say amen once in a while in a Baptist church. God showed up. Look at verse number 11. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven. He said, Abraham, Abraham. And Abraham says, hang on God, I'm busy doing your will. Now, hold on God, I'm trying to finish the last thing that you told me. Can you imagine how this story would have played out differently if Abraham had not responded immediately to the voice of God? Just keep that in your hip pocket. Listen, don't be so busy 
with the things of God that you miss the calling and the direction of God? But I want you to notice God showed up. Here, right before this, this pivotal moment, God showed up. And you know, uh, after my four years in the South, I picked up a couple sl uh, slogans and some sayings that I've held on to. And here's one that I like. God not showed up, God showed off. You see, God didn't just show up and, and say, Abraham, stop. I, I believe you, so don't sacrifice your son. Look at verse uh, uh, number 12. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son and thine only son from me. From our point of view now, if that's where this passage would have stopped, we'd have said, praise God that when Abraham trusted him, God delivered. But think about this. You remember what Isaac said in verse number 7? He said, we have everything we need to worship God, but we, uh, Dad, but he said, we don't have a lamb. And Abraham told him in verse number 7, God will provide. God showed up and spared Isaac. God showed off when he provided a means for them to worship. Think about this for a moment. If all God had done was spare Isaac, we'd have said, man, praise the Lord. But the prescribed form of worship in that moment was the sacrificing of an animal. And so what God did is he not only spared Isaac, he not only provided a substitute, but verse number 13 says, And Abraham lifted up his eyes, and he looked, and behold, or behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. Let me try to make this point clear this morning. In the middle of your test of faith, God will show up. But God will not only show up, God will show off. God will find a way that you can use that test of faith to worship Him. God made a way that Abraham and Isaac could worship Him even at the midst of this test of faith. But verse 14 to me is one of the most interesting. Verse 14 tells us, uh, uh, after God had taken this, uh, this seemingly dreadful situation and made it a chance to worship, verse number 14 says, And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah-Jireh. Now I find it very interesting. Think about all that transpired here. Abraham has endured this great test of faith. And Abraham wanted to name this place. You know what Abraham did not name this place? He never named the place Abraham's faith. He never named the place, look at me. He never named the place, the day my son almost died. He didn't make this test of faith about him. He didn't make it about Isaac. You know what Jehovah Jireh means? God will provide. You see, at the end of the day, after enduring this test of faith, here's what Abraham did. He said, God, I'm not going to make this. You have brought me to it. You have brought me through it. And now I'm going to praise you for it. So how do we pass our test of faith? Trust God. Fully depend on God. He's going to show up. I don't know when. Whenever you're done with your workout. Amen. Whenever you're done having your faith strengthened, God's going to show up. God will often find a way to allow you to use that test as a way to worship Him. And you know what we need to do in return? Don't make it about us. Oh, look at me. I've endured so many tests of faith. No, God has brought me through time and time and time again. Friends, I want to tell you this morning that when Abraham's test was over. He made sure that God was the one that was exalted, not himself. So how do we pass our test of faith? Here's the reality. None of us like hard tests. I don't know that God is ever going to present to you 25 pictures of birds' feet and tell you where they come from. Lord, I hope not. But God will test your faith. Warren Wearsby, talking about a test of faith, said this. He said, life is a school in which God trains us for eternity. Trials are God's textbooks in this school of Christian experience. Maybe you're here this morning and maybe you're right smack dab in the middle 
of a test of faith right now. Maybe you're experiencing circumstances right now that makes you wonder, God, are you still there? Maybe you're tempted to just sit and say, God, I, I can't do this anymore. I quit. I'm walking away. Can I tell you this morning, don't demand an immediate explanation. Just trust that God is still in control. If you're smack dab in the middle uh, of a test of faith right now, draw from your previous experiences and you know what you'll find? That God is faithful. And if you're smack dab in the middle of a test of faith right now, depend on Him and let Him be the one that is exalted. Why? Because God is worthy. Friends, it's not a matter of if we will endure a test of faith. It's a matter of when. And as much as we don't like tests, I want to tell you these tests of faith can be a good thing because we can grow in the end. As our song leader and our pianist come this morning, I want to leave you this morning making sure that you understand that your journey of faith does not begin in a great test of faith. Your journey of faith begins at the foot of the cross. Your journey of faith begins with salvation. You may be here today saying, Oh, preacher, I want to be able to pass a test of faith. The very first one is this, is that the Bible says you were born a sinner, separated from God because of that. But the Bible also says that God loved you and that He wants to be with you forever. And so He sent His Son Jesus to die on Calvary. The Bible says that if you believe with your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, that you will be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So before you leave here today and say, I'm going to pick myself up by my own bootstraps and, and I'm going to try to pass a test of faith. No, first of all, put your faith in Jesus Christ. You may have walked in here today lost, but you can leave here a child of God. But Christian... I want to ask you, are you just coming out of a test of faith? Are you in the middle of a test of faith or are you just getting ready to go into another test of faith? And wherever you find yourself, I want to tell you today, you can pass that test of faith. Just trust Him. I don't know the, the need, I don't know the condition of your heart, but I know that the Bible is plain without faith. It is impossible to please Him. We're going to sing a verse of invitation.